Our subject for this morning, I am warning you. What's, what's our subject? I am warning you. It sounds harsh. But it is an expression of love. And you will see that. Before I get into the message, if you're not using one of these, make sure they're turned off. Favor number two, while we're speaking, pray for us. And say, Lord, put your words in their mouths. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth And the Lord said unto me Behold I have put my words in thy mouth I want God to put his words in our mouths And I ask him publicly to do that Favor number 3 Think. Isaiah 118. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. In other words, the Bible expects us to use our common sense. There is a verse in the Bible where God invites us to think. If thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, how then canst thou contend with the horses? God is saying, think. If you cannot keep up with a man who's running, how can you keep up with a horse? So the religion of the Bible is a religion that requires the use of common sense. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I come, dear God, because I have nowhere else to go. I come because I'm weak and I need your strength. But Father, I don't simply need your strength as some object. I need you because your strength is you i need you dear god in the person of your holy spirit if i have sinned against you in thought word or deed forgive me father put your words in the mouths of my brother and me that we may speak the words of life because the words of life alone can transform the heart of a man or a woman in the name of Jesus Christ, dear God, surround this place and all other sites where this program is being beamed. Surround those places with angels that excel in strength. That we may worship you in peace, in quiet, and in safety. Father, for those persons still resisting the truth, move upon their hearts, I pray, dear God, that they may finally yield to your invitation. Bless the country of Ghana, the host country. Bless the leadership, dear God, because leadership is not easy. Grant to the leaders from the president all the way down wisdom from above that their decisions may please you. Bless every other nation represented by those listening. Father, remember those who are sick. In mercy, touch them, dear God. Bring healing, bring improvement in their conditions. For those with COVID-19, dear God, deliver them completely from that sickness, that illness. Put a special blessing on all the little boys and little girls who are watching. And for those who are not Seventh-day Adventists, in the name of Jesus, grant them a sweet, sweet blessing, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Our subject, I am warning you. Genesis chapter 2, reading from verse 16. And all during the course of this crusade, there are some things I will say over and over again. Because sometimes it requires repetition. 
for people to understand even the simple teachings of the Bible because the carnal mind does not love truth and one of the things I'll repeat over and over again is the absolute importance of obeying God Genesis chapter 2 reading from verse 16 and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. These are the first words God spoke to human beings as recorded in the Bible. Let me say that again. We just read the first words God ever spoke to human beings and those words were a warning if you eat of this tree you'll die a warning but it was an expression of love because God did not want them to die God could have withheld that information but that would not be the way God functions so God warned Adam and Eve leave this tree alone if you eat from it you will die but I love you I want you to live so I have brought words of love in the form of a warning I say again the very first words spoken by God to humanity were a warning a warning about what let's listen to verse 16 again and the Lord God commanded the man God gave Adam a command do not eat of this tree if you disobey you'll die so the warning was do not disobey my command The warning was, do not disobey my command. Several years ago, I was preaching somewhere in Los Angeles. And one of the elders was driving me somewhere. And he said to me, Elder Skeet, you ought to say this. And I said to him, but I said it. He said, say it again. In other words, the next time you preach, say it again. And I've never forgotten that. It is a mistake for a preacher to believe that because he said something once, people understand. It is a terrible mistake to make. So let me say it again. God's warning to Adam and Eve was this. I have given you a command. Do not disobey it. If you disobey it, you die. But let's turn that over. And let's say it this way. I have given you a command. Obey it. And you will live. Let me say it again. <laughs> I have given you a command. Obey it and you will live. Ah, thank you very much. Now, what can we put together with these two statements? 
Obedience is life. Obedience is life. Let's turn that over. Disobedience is death. And that's no joke. Disobedience is death. Let's leave Genesis chapter 2. We'll go to Genesis chapter... Well, we'll stay in Genesis chapter 2. We'll read from verse 1. Our subject, I am warning you. But when God gives a warning, it is an expression of love. Before I go any further, let me pray again. Dear God, please remember my request. I repeat it. Grant to my brother and to me the words to deliver this message and grant us the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, I appeal to you. Amen. Amen. Keeping in mind that God said, if you disobey my commandment, you'll die. Think. Think. Genesis chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which God had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. We are introduced to the Sabbath. Now this is before God gives the warning in Genesis 2, 16, 17. We are introduced to the Sabbath in the Garden of Eden before there was sin. Adam and Eve knew. So when God said, if you disobey, you die, the only commandment that had been clearly expressed at that point was the Sabbath commandment. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. The Holy Spirit led Moses to write the book of Genesis. The Holy Spirit of God arranged for the Sabbath commandment to be the first one mentioned in the Bible. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made, and God disobedience to God is death. Obedience is life. It is a simple message to grasp. But most people live contrary to those words. When you obey God, you are living the life of God. When you obey God, you are living the life of God. When you disobey God, you are living the life of? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why do I say that? Let's go back to Genesis 2. Let's read verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, 
Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God said, Thou shalt surely die. Let's find out what the devil said. Because I just told you, when you obey God, you're living the life of God. When you disobey God, you're living the life of the enemy. Genesis chapter 3, reading from verse 1. And as you read the Bible, read it as if God is speaking to you. Listen to the voice of God. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. We have two statements. Thou shalt surely die from God. Then we have, ye shall not surely die from the devil speaking through a serpent. Thou shalt surely die from God. Ye shall not surely die from the devil very similar except for one word not observe in verse 1 of chapter 3 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made intelligent very cunning and smart there are people who are very intelligent with PhDs and master's degrees who will tell you that the Sabbath is Sunday. They're still wrong. Anything that goes contrary to thus said the Lord is wrong. And so when God said, Thou shalt surely die, the devil said, He shall not surely die. Adam and Eve chose the words of the devil. And in that time, they chose the devil's words. They were living the life of the enemy not the life of God the life of God is a life of conformity with his word I say again in the time that Adam and Eve lived by the words of the devil they were living the life of the enemy when Eve went to Adam she went as a servant of the devil as much as the serpent was a servant of the devil Eve was a, a serpent a servant of the devil but we thank God for salvation because God came down to fix the situation he took away the aprons of leaves and cover them with coats of skin skin comes from animals leaves do not we have the plan of salvation let me explain that a little closely Adam and Eve sinned by disobeying God's command and I have to keep saying command 
The Lord God commanded the man. They sinned by disobeying a command. God came down. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Let's read verse 21. Genesis 3, 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife. Adam and the did the Lord God make coats of skins and, and clothe them? The skins represented the covering of Jesus Christ. The coats were made by God. Because no human being can make righteousness. They were made by God. They were put on by God. This is salvation at work. And God had to do that. Why? Because Adam and Eve had disobeyed a command. The plan of salvation was made necessary because God's commands were broken. Question for you. Are you living in violation of any of God's commands? Don't raise your hand. Let's leave the Garden of Eden. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19. Exodus 16, sorry, Exodus 16. Our subject, I am warning you. Exodus 16, reading from verse 2. And the whole, let me pray again. Father, as I continue to speak, and my brother, please draw closer to us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Now, Israel must be a calling in a sacasaya, etia, Moses and Aaron, I was wrestled. And the children of Israel said unto them, And I fear Israel, a catcher won't say. Would to God we had died in the land by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pots. And when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into the wilderness. To kill this whole assembly with hunger. The Israelites were complaining they were hungry. When people are hungry. You'll be surprised how violent they can become to get food. The most quiet looking people can become very violent when survival is at stake. Now you all look very nice. You all look very quiet. But if tomorrow there's a shortage of rice and oil and maize or whatever else you eat in Ghana and you found out there's a little rice in the store you'd be surprised to see how people will rush and fight including Adventists when people are hungry, they become violent in an attempt to get some food. And so the Israelites complain against Moses and Aaron. Why did you bring us into the wilderness to kill us? Verse 4 of Exodus 16. Then, then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rain every day. That I may prove them. Whether they will walk in my law or no. Keep this in mind. The Israelites had spent a few generations in Egypt. They had been there so long 
they had virtually forgotten God. So when God sent Moses to speak to the Israelites, to Pharaoh, to tell Pharaoh, let my people go, Moses said to God, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers have sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, what is his name? They have forgotten God. Overwhelmingly forgotten God. And Moses knew that. So Moses said, Give me a name. So I can, I can tell them who you are. These are the people we're dealing with. These are the people who are about to go back to Egypt. For bread. And God says to Moses, I will rain bread from heaven. And they'll go out every day and gather it. But I'll do it in such a way that I will test them to see if they will obey my laws or not. Now let's go to verse 26 of Exodus 16. Our subject, I am warning you. Verse 26 of Exodus 16. Seven days, six days, he shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Take a deep breath because I'm about to tell you something that's harsh and hard. Are you ready? Listen to verse 26 again. Six days ye shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. God is saying, I do not provide a living on Sabbath. I provided six days. But I provide enough in those six days to come on the seventh. Let me say it again. God is telling us, as he told the Israelites, six days you'll find it. On, on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it, there shall be none. Listen to the hard statement. If you make a living on the Sabbath, it did not come from God. Because God does not provide manna on the seventh day. Let me ask you this question. Can the devil give you things, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Go to Revelation chapter 13 quickly. Revelation 13 quickly. Let's read from verse 1. Revelation chapter 13, reading from verse 1. We're answering the question Can the devil give you things? And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns. And seven and ten crowns upon his horns. And upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. His feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and, and great authority. And a man to me. So. Who is the dragon? Chapter 12, reading verse 9 of Revelation. 
Revelation 12 verse 9 answers the question, who is the dragon? And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. The dragon is Satan. Now we go back to Revelation 13. And the dragon or Satan gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The devil can give you things. When Satan tempted Christ, temptation number three. Satan said to Christ All these kingdoms will I give you If you fall down And worship me Listen to me carefully The devil can give you things He can give you money Possessions Houses Anything that comes through disobedience is for your destruction. Now we go back to Exodus 16. Verse 26. Six days ye shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. And it came to pass that they went out some of the people together they went out on the seventh day together and they found none look at 27 and 26 God said in verse 26 do not go out gathering on the seventh day in the very next verse the Bible says some people still went out on the seventh day and found nothing. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Wherefore the Lord giveth you on the sixth day the bread and of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Verse 30. So the people rested on the seventh day. What am I trying to tell you? Go back to verse 4 of Exodus 16. Then said the Lord unto Moses. Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather it. I'll send the bread. I'll send the man. They'll, they'll gather it every day. But every day meant six days. That I may prove them whether they will walk so in my law or no. There are ten commandments. God chose the Sabbath commandment the fourth commandment to test the Israelites what is God saying to them what is he saying to us someone who keeps the seventh day Sabbath will have no problem with the other nine a lot of people keep the nine and have problem with the fourth. Now, God says, those who keep the fourth will have no problem with the other nine. God presents to us the Sabbath commandment as the test commandment. It is no wonder that God told Moses in Exodus 31 verse 3 verse 13 Exodus 31 verse 13 Verily my Sabbath you shall keep 
It is a sign between me. A sign. That I am the Lord that sanctifies you. God has chosen the seventh day Sabbath. As a sign. Of the ten commandments. And all ten are required. But God chooses the fourth commandment. As a sign, as the evidence that this is an obedient person. Satan has deceived most of the world. The very commandment that God chose as proof of submission to Him, the church has rejected. And it keeps Sunday. My brothers and sisters, go back to Genesis 2. There's a lot I want to say, but I can't say it now. Now, I really want you to think. Do you promise me you'll think? Well, say yes. So we shall right. be over Listen to verses 1 to 3 of Genesis 2. Please, God, give me the right words in the name of Jesus, I pray. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Here's the point you must think about. God rested first. Then he blessed the day. Which means God rested the entire seventh day. Then he blessed it. When God blessed the seventh day, the seventh day had already passed. Because God didn't rest on a part of the day, he rested on the entire day. And the Bible says, because he rested the entire day, he blessed the day. So God blessed the seventh day when the seventh day had passed. Then what day was it when God blessed the seventh day? What day was it? On what day was God standing when he blessed the seventh day? Sunday. He was standing on the first day. When he looked back and blessed the seventh. Uh, you're not with me. I have lost you in the bushes. <laughs> Let, let's, read, let's read the fourth commandment. Go to Exodus 20. Read from verse 8. You have to get this. My friends online, I hope you're thinking, you must get this. The fourth commandment. If you have the King James Version, let's all read it together and put a smile on God's face. Come on, let's go. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. I can't hear you. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, or for this reason, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Let me say again, the reason the seventh day is holy is because God rested on it. 
nyame ehome o danum god did not rest on the first day enye day ti kan nyame home ye if he had rested on the first day said day ti kan nyame home ya there would have been no light enye nanka han ma you're not with me are you with me? <laughs> if he had rested on the first day, there would have been no light. He rested on the seventh. The entire day. Where the entire day had passed. Then God blessed that day. What I'm telling you, it was Sunday when God blessed the seventh. In other words, now today is a Sabbath, the seventh day. And now a day to so so. On this day, sa and day, I say, me say, tomorrow I'll go to the supermarket. Chana yeni never tmi ako, but yeah. I say that while I'm standing on the Sabbath day. Brami jina hume dasui. I make a statement about Sunday. Me ye as me kasam. What I'm telling you, God was standing on Sunday. Nyame no ojina when he blessed. The seventh day. And God says, remember that day. That's the day on which I rested. Go with me to Luke chapter 4. Look at 89. Luke chapter 4. Look at 89. We read verse 16. Our subject, I am warning you. Luke chapter 4, reading verse 16. When you found it, say amen. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read the bible tells us it was the custom of jesus christ to worship on the sabbath day let me tell you something else the voice that spoke from sinai and said remember the sabbath day and keep it holy that voice was the voice of jesus christ let me say it again the voice that spoke from Sinai that said remember the Sabbath day that voice was Jesus we just read in Luke 4.16 it was his custom to worship on the Sabbath day now listen to what this same Jesus says to you right now go to John chapter 14 John chapter 14. Let's read verse 15. John 14. Reading verse 15. If ye love me. You finish the verse. Keep my commandments. If you love me. Keep my commandments. I have a question for you. You must answer me quickly. Do you love Jesus? You do? You raise your hand as though you have arthritis. Let's try that again. Do you love Jesus? Ah, yeah. uh, God bless you, God bless you. Hands down. What did he say to do? Yes, you see then. Good don't know. I say then. Keep my commandments. Question for you. Is the Sabbath a commandment of Jesus? So uh yes. Does Jesus want you to keep it? Yes. Yes, you perceive this so I you love Jesus, I believe you. He wants you to obey him. One more verse and I'll close the message. Go to Romans chapter 6. Romans 4, 18. Romans chapter 6. Romans 4, 18. Let's read verse 16. Romans 6, reading verse 16. Romans 4, 18. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. So whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness look at that verse again you read it quietly 
Read it, read it. Don't look at me. Read it. You've read it? Now let's read it together. Know ye not. In other words, don't you know? To whom ye yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants ye are. So when you say, in other words, the Bible is saying all human beings obey someone. And there are only two choices. God or Satan. Let me say that again. All human beings must obey. The choice is God or Satan. Listen to the verse again. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves so servants to obey. Yield yourselves mean choose whether of sin or to death. That's obeying Satan. Or of obedience unto righteousness. That's obeying Christ. We have sin leads to death. Obedience, righteousness. And righteousness is life. Choose obedience which leads to life. Say no to disobedience. Say yes to the Sabbath commandment. It's the one that God blessed. It's the only one He requires. Whether of sin unto death, obedience, righteousness. How many of you will choose obedience, righteousness? Can I see your hand? I see your hand. I believe you stand up with us. Listen very carefully to what I have to say. There's someone listening to me. You need to tell God publicly. I love you. And I love you enough to obey you. The only way to love God is by obeying him. Listen to the second commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The only way to love God is to obey him. Let me say it again. The only way to love God is not to say it it is to obey him. Now, someone needs to say to God publicly, I love you. Which means I am willing to obey you. There's someone listening to me. You used to obey God very faithfully. You have drifted from God. You have drifted in your obedience. Listen to my words. You have drifted from God. But in your heart, you think you still love him. Tell God today, I love you. I am sorry I have drifted. I want to come back and obey you from my heart. If there's someone like that, come right here. I have drifted from God. I want to come back and show my love 
by obeying come come right up to the front if the words just that I spoke apply to you I have drifted from God and I need to tell him I love you and I want to demonstrate that love by obeying you you've drifted and you're coming to see father I am coming back because I really love you but I have disappointed you but thank you that you always love me come I have drifted from God I have not shown my love and so now we saw when you're mentioning, I am coming back. But somebody else come. I have drifted from God. I'm feeling I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Come, bra. If you're outside, come. If you're upstairs, come, bra. I have drifted from God. I'm feeling I'm mentioning. I am coming back. And I am saying today, I love God enough to obey Him. Come. For those of you online, I am speaking to you. You are probably in a church somewhere. Respond to the call. There are church leaders who will receive you. I have drifted from God. I am coming back. Come back before it's too late. And now you are coming. Or China be and now we are ready to go. We are ready to go. We are ready to go. We are the whom are brought also, and now you will sit here, my young couple. But China, I be catchy. A bray a woman in your prepa. The biada a war a dear name. Now since you are watching your mere dear no, and quite you will in chain. Bra, you have a bomb pie. I call a crab a con. I was so bad. The biada a one a year war bra. You free high and new you be see. But now you are ready to dear, and now you will quite Bra. Just come. We are want to bra. We are going to bra. We the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus says, I have come to give you life. And to give you that life abundantly. When you come to Christ, you come into the Creator. When you stay with Satan, you're staying with the one who tried to kill Jesus. Come back to Jesus Christ. I have drifted. I'm coming back. Come back to your Savior. Come. And then I'll pray. While I'm waiting for the rest of you to come. Someone needs to say, Father, I have drifted so far from you. I feel convicted. And I need to be rebaptized. I feel convicted. I need to be rebaptized. Evangelism, page 375, paragraph 2. When a soul is reconverted, let that soul be rebaptized. Someone may be saying, I feel convicted. I need to be rebaptized and start with my God all over again. If that is you, let me see your hand. I need to be rebaptized. Yes, and start with my God all over again. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. For those of you who just raised your hands, you need to be rebaptized. Come right in here. 
Come right up top. Come right up top. Right up to the top. Come right up to the front. Come to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. I need to be rebaptized. I have another call to make. I have not yet been baptized. But I know I should. I know enough to make a decision to be baptized. But I have not yet made that decision. I am willing to make that decision now. If that is you, let me see your hand. I have not been baptized. But I am willing to make that decision right now. Come, 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 come. Stand right over here. Cabra. Frobra. Right over here. Come, Bra. my brother. Bra. I have not yet been baptized. I am willing to make that decision now. Right over, right over there. Right over there. Uh, mom, mom, Separate group. Mom, mom, Come on, my good brother. Come on. For those of you online, the call is for you. I have not been baptized. But I know I ought to make that decision. All I'm asking you now is make the decision. That's all I'm asking. Someone has come. I know in my heart I ought to be baptized. I am making the decision today and until let me see my grippy come bra sixty seconds and I pray a cut a crab in a mirror bomb pie I know I ought to be baptized just come bra bra just come I am bra. making the decision now bra I won't be baptized today I am making a decision today and let me see my grippy name so come, bra. 30 seconds, then I pray. Come now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Come now. 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 Come I want the names because I want to take the names with me and pray over them and pray over them. And the church also needs to know who they are. Because this is very serious. Okay, oh, we're making a place for you to sit after the service. Okay. Heads bowed. I while I'm praying you may come in response to the appeal while I'm praying you will not disturb the prayer heads bowed eyes closed our father in heaven we come before you again at the end of this service to thank you for what your word has done Jesus said the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life in the name of Jesus Christ, their God, who died for us, accept those who answer the calls right now where they stand. Grant to them a measure of your spirit that will sustain them in their decision that no power on earth or anywhere else will change their minds. There is rejoicing in heaven, their God, because of their decision, and the devil is angry. He will do everything he can, working through friends and family to change their minds. As surely as Jesus went to the cross, let them stand by their decision. And for that man or that woman who is in the valley of decision, not sure what decision to make, aim for 15 more seconds or 30. And I ask you while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, is there someone else who needs to come and say, I need to be rebaptized or I need to make the decision for the first time? Is there someone else who needs to come? Come now. I'm pausing in the prayer. Come now. I have not yet been baptized. I'm making the decision right now. God bless you, sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come right up. Come right up. Come right up. God bless you. Some are moving away from the devil. Come, 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 come. come, 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 come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Anybody else? 
Let me offer the, let me finish the prayer. Anybody else? Online, the call is still for you. Father in heaven, I must close the service now. But don't close the door of the call. Do everything you can, dear God, to save them, I pray. Now let us meditate on the words we've heard. Bring us back this evening to hear your word again. I pray in Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Those of you who just came up, please fill those seats right over there. And there are pastors there who will talk with you. Let God's people occupy those seats. God bless you. God bless you. Occupy those seats.